from February 21st. Yeah. Does anyone have any corrections to be made? Or a movement to approve the minutes? I will move to approve the minutes. And I will second that. I'll second that. And then all in favor? It's unanimous. <laughs> And then I think we're ready for accessions. Uh, uh, so up and then we'll... Apologies for being late. No, Chris. Chris. We have a couple things to vote on for potential accessions. Uh, we have this navy blue suit date unknown. My guess is somewhere maybe from the late 70s or so based on the sort of polyester blend that it is. Um, inside the coat, it says Harry O. Lynch, Longmont, Colorado. Harry O. Lynch was a men's clothing store that was located on the street from 1928 to 1980. So it's a very long lasting store. Um, the woman who was running it in 1980 was the wife of the guy who had purchased it. Uh, and she, I think she was well into her 80s when she was still running it, that um, store. And we got lots of pictures from the Times Call from, from those years. Uh, so this was found at a vintage shop, um, but considering we didn't have any actual object from that store, and who knows how much is out there with it being 40 years ago, um, we thought that this would be a great addition. We voted one at a time. Uh, we do the whole whole okay. thing each vote. Unless four Any members questions? want to carve out. Any discussion? Ooh, how do we get in here? Oh, it's like this. Okay. Uh, this um, was a woman who came in and dropped off her grandfather's uh, Trojan Handbook, which is uh, from Longmont High School, uh, 1934 to 1935. That year, I think he was a freshman, and all the freshmen received one of these books. It's not a yearbook, it's like a welcome. It has like the school song, poem, everything, the list of teachers, everything you'd want to know as a new student coming into the school. Just a little tiny thing. Um, so this was a no-brainer to us, and we have a direct connection with um, her grandfather, Harold Swallow. I think his name is in the front cover. Nice. Nice. Any, any questions on this one? They still have the uh, same song. The high oh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody go to Long Manhattan? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is kind of an intercity transfer. The GIS department was cleaning out a lot of its archives, and uh, this guy, Eric O'Brien, brought by all these mylar. They're quite large, they're about this big. Um, transparencies of the city. Um, you could just kind of make out that there's like a, a key with boxes, and each page represents a box on the map. Uh, and so this one that I included, this is 287, just south of here. This empty area here is now Prospect Beach Home. This mm. is the Southmore Park. And this is the, I guess, the medical building somewhere around in this, this area, I guess. Um, there's also prints, um, like silver gelatin prints that kind of correspond to this map. They take about four boxes worth. Those are smaller, they're like 10 by 10 or 12 by 12. And there's also the original film <laughs> that they used in the airplane when they were taking these. They were from 1992. Um, so it's in, a lot had um, changed. Like obviously, Prospect had some name in there. Any questions? No, on that's what I moved it to have, right? Because I had the two. Whoa. Yeah. So it's, is there a photo of you waving? Yeah. <laughs> in the plane? No, but I remember there was nothing on Hoover uh, past. Past Third Avenue, there was a just a Wendy's and then the old uh, mall. Yeah, we saw some of those in, mixed in where it was like the mall and almost nothing else. Yeah, exactly. There was nothing else. So, yeah, these I think will be really interesting for research purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, last but not least, 
I believe these materials have actually been here for a while, but it took me a little while to do research on it and to find the last living relative. Um, I think there's one, the Google three. Oh yeah, never mind. That one's Sorry. Three, yeah. Well, this two is two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this one, Terry Sternberg. Um, lived in Longmont in the early 2000s. Um, she had some, and she was a concert violinist, but she had some mental health issues that caused her to be in a hoarding situation that resulted in her house being taken away from her. And she was living on the streets in the 2010s. Um, she passed away in 2013, but before she did, she had become a vocal advocate for the rights of unhoused people in the Boulder area um, and was interviewed multiple times. There's also a book of um, stories from people that were living on the streets um, that was written by an author in Niwa. So I purchased that book to go with this. Um, these, I believe, we're not 100% sure that these must have been in her house and somehow survived to one owner. Um, the house was not conducted, torn down as her only living relative thought it was, but it was um, fixed up and I think it sold in the last couple of years and these must have been in the basement and no one in the last 10 years had thought of moving them. So uh, the real estate agent had brought them here and um, yeah, it's an interesting story. I kept a selection of things. The other items are returned um, to her cousin that had nothing to do with Longmont, but uh, if you ever wanted to profile someone in that community, it seemed like a, an interesting selection of things. What happened to her? Do we know? She, she was an alcoholic. Um, they did find housing for her in Boulder, uh, and she was found dead in her apartment. She was apparently being a baby. It's a very tragic story all around. Her, she was adopted. Her parents put a lot of pressure on her to be a vi I think they told a story <laughs> my cousin. Um, a lot of pressure on her to be really, really uh, good in violin. She went, she was from Florida. She moved to California, was the principal violinist for the San Francisco Ballet. But I think, according to her cousin, her alcoholism in, uh, got her kicked out of that. And so she had been to Colorado for summer music festivals in the classical musical scene before. So she decided to settle here and start a new life. Um, but she had a lot of, I think, trauma from her parents. Also, she was great in college when she was in San Francisco and she was never able to get over that. So there was just a lot, a lot in there. Wow. Yeah. So it's a, it's an interesting story. Yeah. Well, that's where the trauma comes from mm -hmm. right? and the alcoholism. Right. Uh, or the possibility also of the adoption. Yeah. Being a child does. who's adopted at any age and all of that. That's yeah. yes. Well, alcoholism usually stems from some kind of trauma. Yeah. You know, so there's lots. That's, that's a really sad story. It is sad. She was beautiful. Yeah, yeah, she was really gorgeous. And oh. it, we have pictures of her too near to the end of her life. Um, so we've got a whole range of this woman's life in photographs. So, yeah, I have to applaud Elizabeth for cracking down. It was literally like, here's a box of stuff. <laughs> and she was able to, you know, track down the story from, you know, the documents that were in in that box and that it turned out to be, you know, a really a story that's very hard normally for museums to tell. I mean the unhoused just there's not very often that. Jay, have you written that for a story? Have you, I mean, not for publication, but have you written it up for researchers? So. Uh, I think I need to get my notes into a more formal, yeah. <laughs> uh, which I will do for this, but yeah, it's all kind of handwritten notes at this point. Yeah. Um, and also, it's what was most helpful is the Daily Camera had done news articles and interviews, not only with her, but later on. There was a whole thing that what really led me to find the cousin was her violin was found in a pawn shop by a violin professor at one of the local um, schools here. And he said that the violin it was in terrible shape, but it was, that it was talking to him. And he wrote a whole piece. Um, he figured out he actually knew her through like just what, you know, general like violinists knowing each other. Um, so when he 
so he wrote a whole musical piece and there was a concert and then the newspaper covered that and so I was able to contact the professor to get connected with her family to get the rest of the story. Um, supposedly she had her violin stolen or from the shepherds and then they pawned it. So that was your drama for the day. <laughs> and that's all I have. Any other discussion on any of these? When did she die? 2013. 2013. Mm -hmm. She was born in the 40s, I think. 49. Yeah. Any other questions about any of these sessions? Um, would anyone like to make one or two appropriate sessions for that? saw when you came in, work is progressing nicely on the uh, mm -hmm. Stewart County Courtyard. Um, they actually poured the main slab for the new hardscape portion of the courtyard today. So they're out there now doing the saw cutting to create the uh, pattern, uh, kind of this grid pattern on the, and the, car and the uh, hardscape. And then also they were starting to put up steel for really starts to really take shape now you can actually see what it's going to feel like and it's going to be a, a great addition to the museum um, we are um, basically this summer going to use it pretty lightly because we want the grass to grow in so um, we'll have our big kind of grand opening will be uh, at the gala on september 7th we'll have a few other things in there just kind of some Previews and some use of it during wrestling camps and so on. But um, for the most part, uh, we'll have summer concerts will take me out to parks this, oh, this summer, so I won't be here. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Exhibits, they are busily working on the Lego exhibition. You can see a list here of all the different things that uh, will be in the Lego exhibit, which will open up June 1st. Auditorium programming. Um, Elizabeth and I did a program uh, that highlighted a lot of the museum's photo collection. Well, there's also 243 books ticketed, so very nice. Um, and fun to show off a lot of the collection. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, the Art and Sip program, which happens on Thursday evenings, um, this spring we've increased from one class to two classes every Thursday. And um, we have seen great response to that. We thought it would take a while for those people to get familiar with, oh, there's now a four o'clock class too, but uh, they've been filling out quite well. So we're very pleased about that. Um, and then summer camp, um, uh, last I heard, we were at about 65% uh, full for our summer camps, and we've already rewarded all 80 of the scholarships that we have available uh, for this uh, summer. So we are pleased by that response. Collections. Uh, Elizabeth wrote a grant called a CAP grant. Um, so we'll have experts coming in, assuming it's funded, to look at the museum's collections and also the museum building. So they actually uh, have a, both a conservator that looks at uh, the collection side and then more of a building expert that will look at the HVAC system and the roof and all those kind of things. So um, 
that kind of early step to creating a new long range plan for the next steps to upgrading our corrections care and hopefully further grants down the road. Department of Public Places um, and Collections. We we'll actually did a uh, collaboration. Art and Public Places was contacted by the Children, Youth, and Families uh, Division, uh, better known as the Youth Center. Um, they had a mural done probably in the 1990s. Two murals. Um, two murals um, that they no longer wanted and um, uh, so rather than just have them tossed out uh, art and public places work with collections to store them elizabeth is going to do some more research and see if we can figure out who painted them what the story is behind them and um, if it makes sense to add them into the museum's collection then you'll see them on a future uh, um, session list And your development. I think last month we talked about the Touch a Truck fundraiser on June 22nd. So, um, working on getting sponsorships for that and uh, continuing obviously a lot of work on the capital campaign. We've got a, another matching challenge that will be coming up in April where um, we're hoping to get as broad a match as possible as many people Five dollar gift or a fifty dollar gift. Every gift will be will be matched by a very generous donor. Uh, we've got some of the stats uh, that uh, we can see. So, um, 2023 we had duality, contemporary Indigenous art. See very similar uh, attendance to picturing the West. Um, January was a little bit low, partly because the gallery was closed for that week after a tight burst. Um, and saw a pretty good increase in ticket sales uh, February year over year and uh, January. We had one program in January in 2020 and then January of 23. So, um, you need to see growth there. Um, also hit a milestone recently. Uh, we are now over 1,000 members um, at, at the Longmont Museum. First time ever. Uh, was not that long ago. We had about 400 members. So I'm pleased to see that uh, growth. Uh, let's see. The um, marketing mentions the auditorium program shell and I'll pass around what, what that is. Take one and pass it on. So this is a brochure that um, if you go to any program at the auditorium, um, the actual program of that event is slipped inside this. So we have a nice glossy full color uh, program that um, gets used, usually reused several times because folks often don't uh, keep it at the end of the event, but gives people a chance as they're waiting for the event to read about the museum, see what's coming on, kind of what, what's happening, and then also uh, has a nice, nice cover for uh, the program uh, of that evening. Um, also, if you're on Instagram and Facebook, we've been doing a lot of posts about uh, construction, about some of the programs that are going on. So please uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And in uh, volunteer and evaluation coordination, uh, we just had another uh, prototyping event uh, yesterday, uh, March 19th. Um, for our Lego exhibit, so I uh, had some kind of rough versions of some of the interactives that we're going to have in Lego. Uh, it was a chance for public to come in, try them out, see what was working, see if there were any problems that then could be resolved before we 
Do the final versions and put them on there for Jim. Any questions about the director's report? Um, can you tell us anything more about the beta testing for the pre-K field trip program? Um, let's see here. Um, so the birthday parties and field trips, basically what um, we're going to be offering is opportunities that are very much aligned with our current Discovery Days program. Um, so it will either, we'll have a field trip, like a pre-K group come in and do Discovery Days activity and it will just be that uh, class rather than the general public. So it's a chance to bring in uh, folks from uh, various pre-Ks around the area. And then the birthday party is we see uh, potential for some significant revenue generation. Um, so the Discovery Days birthday parties will kind of be our first test. Essentially, um, the la after the last of our Discovery Days uh, hands-on early childhood programs ends for the day on a Friday or a Saturday, then uh, we'll have a Discovery Days birthday party. So. Typically for the younger kids, you know, um, four, five, six-year-olds um, come in, have a Discovery Days experience, have the same crafts, same theme as we do um, during regular Discovery Days, and then um, adjourn to the adjoining uh, room for uh, cake and candles. Uh, so we're going to try that out. Uh, we are hoping it will be well received, and then. In the fall, what we are anticipating doing is adding on uh, birthday parties tied to the Lego exhibit. Mm -hmm. So it would again be um, either an evening or a Sunday morning when we're not open. Um, and if those are successful, then we plan to kind of implement that as an ongoing program once our children's gallery opens uh, in 2026. Kind of looking at ways to bring in more revenue that can support um, uh, programs throughout the museum mm -hmm. uh, and birthday parties. Folks with with kids know can be very expensive and often not that educational. So we want to try and you know both have revenue but also really make it an educational experience. So, Are you guys kind of trying to figure out the price adjustments in the beta phase? Now? Yeah, like, it's it's kind of like. What's going to be competitive pricing? How many kids is going to be a good maximum? Um, how is it going to work? How, you know, how many people are we going to need to be in the gallery? And and then you know, getting those uh, kids then in, we're going to use our classroom D for kind of cake and things like that because it's the one room that's not really uh, rented on a regular basis or set up for the discovery days. So. Um, there's just kind of a lot of the logistics that we want to test out before we do a big announcement of these available to, uh, to the general audience. How about um, moving the Thursday night music to the parks? Parks are um, ideas. Um, so we're going to do three uh, concerts, one in Collier Park, one in Carr Park, which is up in, uh, in North Longmont, and one in Willow Farm Park, which is um, Southwest Longmont. And those were chosen both kind of geographically diverse um, and also kind of the best fits logistically. Um, either there's parking or they're in fairly walkable neighborhoods, so people can walk, walk into the concerts. Um, I think generally our sense is this is a one-year thing. We really like having concerts here at the museum, and we're excited to have you know, the, the uh, courtyard. But this summer just didn't feel like we were quite ready for it. So to keep our concert series going, to kind of keep people aware that the museum is doing concerts, that's why we decided to bring them out into the parks. So um, I, I think 
uh, be a good experiment. I'm, I'm guessing we'll we'll probably uh, make it a one year experiment, just given the the challenges and the logistics and the cost. Because we have to bring in a stage and all kinds of things. So, but yeah, come on out for any of them. We'll we'll be announcing the dates in our in our program catalog. I don't have a report from the chair. Does anyone have any unfinished business that they would like to address? And then I have listed for new business um, that it's time for recruitment to fill the vacancies on our board and commission. Application deadline is April 19th. If anyone knows someone who might be a good fit in this industry. Um, let's see, so we have you know, three vacant spots on the board, and Bob, I think your term is up, so you just joined. You know, just filling a, a, a partial term. Well, hopefully, it'll be apply. I'm, I will apply. Yes. Wonderful. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, We're a tough crowd, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you had any uh, inquiries? Uh, I do have one uh, uh, person who is very interested, a um, professor from Front Range Community College, uh, Caitlin Flanagan, or Caitlin Keene, sorry. Um, uh, she's actually worked with us a couple of times on some donation, potential donations to the collection, and um, so I reached out to her because um, she's pretty engaged with museums. Uh, she actually almost came tonight she was like oh when's the next meeting i want to come i was like oh actually it's tonight she was like oh well can't quite make it for tonight but um she uh she said she's going to be putting in an application um so we're also hoping to you know get, get some more you know uh, uh does the vacancy include bob's position um so we have three vacancies plus bob's position. oh plus bob um, so okay. three total three plus uh, yeah um so, you know, love to have uh, uh, more diversity on the board. And so it's pretty big, you know, uh, wide variety of uh, voices around the table talking about what, what um, is going on and, and just being ambassadors out into the community. Um, so uh, if, if you know of folks, by all means, let them know. And I think I did email out to everybody the uh, uh, link to the application. Um, so it goes through the city clerk's office, you all know, and I think most of you um, have been a part of recent uh, ones where it's actually board members who are um, the ones that do the first interview. So um, we will be looking for board members to be on the interview panel uh, once applications close on uh, the 19th. I thought we could have uh, artificial Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and no one would be hired. <laughs> I, I have to say, Jared uh, on our staff has done amazing things with with AI and some of the the um, concepts that he's come up with, like for our children's gallery, where you know he'll tell the AI, okay, here here's what I want, and it puts a picture. That's like that's amazing. It's you know beautiful <laughs> renderings of, of galleries. Now we still have to build them. Yeah, I can't do that for this yet. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then you'll be sued for copyright infringement. <laughs> we were trying to get it to give us a midnight underwater mermaid cafe for the children. <laughs> it was interesting to see what it came up with, and we'd be like more purple, more shells, and each individual would add different things. Um, and then, is there anything else from the 2023 program? Oh, let me uh, hand around. So this was not done in time for the packet. Give it to you all now. So this is a summary of what we did last year. Um, just thought it might be nice to have on one page all of the programming and rentals 
that the museum did. 606 programs, 25,000 people, um, $245,000 in revenue, um, and a wide variety of different types of programs. Discovery Days, Early Childhood, Films, Camps. Uh, we just fairly recently, I think last year was our first year, starting a teen program. And we've definitely seen that grow um, this year. We, we now have typically around 10 to 12 kids per uh, session. So you can see last year uh, we had five or six per, per program. What kind of, uh, what kind of program do you go to? Um, so it's, it's basically a drop-in craft and create program. So it's kind of discovery days for teenagers. They come in, there's craft uh, materials available. Uh, often there's, there's a theme and they kind of talk about, well, what's going to be the theme for, for the next week's one. So they have an opportunity to kind of help create the program. Um, and that is led by one of our newer education staff members, Henry Anderson, who uh, is in his early 20s and a uh, very interesting guy. He's like getting a degree in archaeology and also has a lot of pop culture expertise. Kind of a great fit for that. Mm -hmm. yes. um, in Art and SIP uh, 2023, we did 25. This year, we'll, we'll probably do more than double that. Um, concerts, we probably won't do quite as many concerts, because that includes seven outdoor concerts, which we'll do two this year. Um, our school tour program is still definitely coming back from COVID. Um, it was just basically wiped out during COVID, and, and you know, a lot of those school tours are that individual connection that a teacher has with the museum and um, so many teachers have moved on that that's a program we're going to have to do over time um, but um, walking tours that's something that will be transitioning this year from me to elizabeth um, and then uh, talks in the auditorium holiday programs variety of other programs and then uh, exhibit openings and of course uh, the Muertos, our biggest festival, which is held in downtown every year. Um, over 5,000 people come to that. Plus, then rental events. Um, we have our most rentals and our highest revenue uh, in rentals in 2023. So, definitely a program that has come roaring back after. Post-COVID, the post-COVID era. <laughs> or at least the COVID normal, I don't know, COVID <laughs> extended, I'm not sure what we call it. Um, any questions on the program? Did you do anything about COVID, by the way? We've done some collecting um, COVID. Documented at all? Um, uh, we've got... Uh, Took a lot of photographs during COVID around town, um, but I think there's still more more documented to do. There's a lot of newspapers and stuff. And right, we've got the newspapers. We um, when you had some vaccine vials. Right, we got the first uh, vials of vaccine mm. used in Long Lodge. You get the test um, too. Yeah. yeah, we should we should collect some tests. Not just the mm -hmm. basic relics. I remember walking down Main Street when they, when they shut everything down. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. It was completely, completely a ghost town. It was so weird. Yeah. But exactly. really, but really neat. Photos yeah. of the signs on the yeah, all the way down, all the way down Main Street, and all of it was just completely empty. There was no one on the street. It was just completely empty. Yeah, how many photos? I, I know I should have taken them. I just never walked into it. Yeah, yeah. this is so twilight zone. This is so odd. We're actually one of the collections that um, we're still working on. So this is a new uh, Susie. This is um, kind of a summary of the programming that we did okay. uh, in 2023, um, and we're just we're talking a little bit about. Um, I mentioned this is kind of the 
first full, we feel like, post-COVID year okay. programming. Yeah. Um, uh, and that we are seeing most of our programs have returned um, to what they were in 2019. Um, okay. The one big exception being school tours that are yeah. still, still building back. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, but uh, definitely a lot of great um, programming and, and a lot of, lot of mm -hmm. more growth coming in. In 24, we're expanding a number of our education programs. Okay. Um, Discovery Days program nice. has added more sessions. The uh, Art from SIP is adding more sessions. We'll also be adding birthday parties as kind of a test, and um, uh, then what's 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 the uh, age span on the birthday parties? We're gonna start with like the uh, three to six year old that are tying into our Discovery Days audience, and then when we add the ones for Lego, I think we'll probably do up to um, about age twelve. Some of those details we're still working out. It's one of the reasons we're calling this a beta test on the birthday party. <coughs> mm -hmm. Figure out exactly what's our sweet spot with age. But, um, oh yeah, I was, I was mentioning, Bruce was asking about kind of how we had documented COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the, um, we have one potential board member who actually took photographs of all the churches around mm -hmm. Longmont um, and the signs on them, you know, were closed due to COVID mm -hmm. or uh, what, what they were saying. This was um, multiple different uh, subjects, but one of them is, is religion. And um, so uh, mm -hmm. we're trying to get, get her to donate those, those yeah. photos to the museum's collection. She's thinking of logging today, right? Okay. Oh. What did she give you? A link to a blog, and then she said it will take her a little more time to get me original files. Oh, so it's a blog of her photography? Of the churches during the, the churches during mm -hmm. COVID. Oh, and she was specifically was interested in what the signs were saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The kind of messages they were putting That's out there. Idea. That was a good idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Of course, quite a few of those little churches around Old Town have been turned into residences. Yeah. Yeah, um, the Christian Science Church is a residence now. Yeah. Um, wow. And the one, at, yeah, the sixth and the sixth uh, and Sherman. Uh, Pratt. Also. Oh, yeah, the, the sixth, you're right. Mm -hmm. That one. Mm -hmm. The other one, um, fourth and uh, Pratt, that was turned into a residence. Oh. There's a church right across from Thompson Park. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the Christian Science. Oh, that's what it was, Christian Science. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ironically, it's sort of a thing for churches to do strip homes now. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Small yeah. kind of independent homes. Who bought the other, that other one? On, uh, uh, Sixth and Sherman one? No, or the uh, uh, Bowen and... Uh, oh, Long's Peak. Long's Peak, yeah. yeah. That, that, that little was church was up for sale. Oh, oh sure. really? Someone mm -hmm. bought it. Uh, so another little church, or is it someone? I don't know. I have not heard. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's such a because you look straight down Long yeah, exactly. Peak and it's right at the end. That's right, right there. That's right. So it's kind of a, yeah. a landmark. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, there's definitely we're seeing a lot of churches turn over into other other uses. Longmont's becoming secularized. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on the programming list? Oh, this is great, Eric. This is a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, it's more than 600 programs. Yeah. We kind of need to expand the team uh, programming. We're really pleased. I mean, that those kids are so uh, unhappy now. Uh, that. You, you ban the phones. Don't let them, the phones enter the building. And you might actually have a good time. Your anxiety level will go down. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I told my team volunteers in Broomfield how I wish there would be like a camp 
for adults where you would be no internet and they just looked at me like, why would you want that? Like, oh, because you have no idea what it what was, it was like, like before. before. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's so much better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, the teen, teen program, that is, most museums have really struggled. Yeah, to I was going to say that. That's uh, a kind teen, of difficult. So it's, it's exciting that our program started it in 23 and and it's now it was like five or six kids now it's like 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. so what's the age um, age span of those kids um i think for the most part it's probably the junior high high school um early high school mm -hmm. yeah. 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 that's still kind of chasing with the most change in personality yeah, I know. Junior high school. Wow. That's about the worst age in <laughs> one's entire don't, lifetime. We don't yeah. really have a whole lot of programming for that age. Yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's part of the problem. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. And we really need to do more because we're having an influx of drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Are we? Yes. Mm -hmm. There's a huge amount of drug use going on and fentanyl and crap. And um, of course, I think we've been roughly normal in terms of guns. You know, Chris Dempsey is like crazy. Um, but it's a, it's a tough time for kids. Mm -hmm. And the programming, I, I remember I once had an idea for kids to run an ice cream shop um, called Sundays, S-U-N-D-A-D. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that and having them uh, tie it to, to school and having them be able to learn it and work it and learn about entrepreneurship. I have a friend who runs a program with a nonprofit in Walton, Massachusetts, where they run a bookstore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we need to do more of that. We really teach kids about, one of the things I remember, I devised a program where we were teaching them about uh, kids about uh, taking care of themselves, living skills. Mm -hmm. um, bank book, uh, all of this stuff that they don't know about and uh, could use the responsibility. Yeah, I would, I would think financial literacy should yes. be taught mm -hmm. in the high But it's school. not. It's not anymore. It's never been. Just basic financial It literacy. should be basic financial skills and living skills, how to take care of yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, and we're, we're certainly... Uh, uh -huh, there you go. By, uh, uh, what, uh, uh, idea for you. Um, what we've what we've accomplished, the teen teen audience is definitely a hard audience to reach, mm -hmm. and so we'll hope to build on what we've done with the teen craft to create programs. We do have a life skills fair coming up at the Boulder County Fairgrounds at the end of this month. No, they, you need. It has to be a yeah. captive audience. Yes. <laughs> you know, you can't graduate unless you know how to know something about financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're gonna. And it should be a class. It should be an ongoing class where the kids have to fill out bank accounts, bank books, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, uh, and learn how to process the money, how to deal with banks, how yes, to deal, and yes. they can credit do it cards, online. Credit cards. Yeah, credit cards. Even investing, I mean, just yes. very yes. basic concepts. Yeah. One is happening on Fridays right now. Is that the day the plenary Museum uh, session? Wednesdays, yes. I think, is the, the day for the team craft to create. Mm -hmm. And is that something that is going to try to move towards revenue, or is it more important to kind of get that audience in the door? Um, I think we'd like kind of a break even eventually mm -hmm. uh, with that one. Um, it, we started out as free, just to, uh, yeah. um, but actually we are getting um, some folks just giving a donation and saying, you know, I know it's not required, but I mm -hmm. do want to you know, pay for the cost of materials. Mm -hmm. um, so, so we're pretty pleased about that. And that's kind of, I think, the direction we'd want to see. And, and um, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be one of our big revenue generators, but really important program. So, like revenue numbers, like when Discovery Days revenue numbers are here, like is that not including like the cost of materials? So it's like this is the revenue. So Discovery Days is another program that 
is definitely not breaking even and we don't anticipate that it will it's it's really so that revenue is entire revenue from all the uh, kids and parents coming in mm -hmm. um, we do also get uh, some grant funding to support mm -hmm. that program um, it's just such an important aspect that early childhood exposure to museums mm -hmm. and and also that program is very much geared toward um, adult uh, child interactions and and our facilitators will work with parents about like oh you know like redirecting if a child is maybe misbehaving in a way that's not like stop that but you know in a way that's a little more productive <laughs> and so you know they're they're very much trained around um, how to you know basically teach skills to to parents that, that come in with story days and, and how to work you know not take over the project allow the child to do the project but kind of support them in that so, um, that program is um, our largest program in terms of attendance and um, one of and our longest running program it's been running six years oh wow We, so we are not a licensed childcare facility. So that is, that is what we have to um, stay away, from. Stay away mm -hmm. from because that's a whole yeah. Yeah. big yeah. complicated yeah. thing. And yeah. so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so we, um, we may work, uh, rec uh, recreation does have some of that. So we, uh, may work with them on sometimes when we really want to have like a babysitting aspect and uh, do that. But uh, as far as being our getting licensed ourselves, I don't think we uh, would pursue that without significantly more staff. Yeah. 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 Are there in the building rules? Um, yes. So if the parents are in the building. Um, so we've talked about like the parents might be at an urban SIP and the uh, child could be in another uh, room. That that we can do if we have the staff to make that work. Yeah, because I know that that is like a different level, like where yeah, the work requirement in mm -hmm. the building. Yeah. Different, so. okay. um, are there any other board comments? Let's see, I do have one other item. So the April board meeting, I will be out of town. Um, obviously, someone else can can fill in for me if, if you wish to continue to meet. But just wanted someone else to know that and uh, see if I would have any thought of rescheduling or, or canceling that meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any I have a comment. Um, I'm here on this board uh, because I attended a neighborhood group leaders association um, where council member Waring mm -hmm. uh, made a plea, can I say plea, <laughs> uh, for boards and commissions. Um, that is the reason I was on the transportation board. Um, also through the NGLA. That meeting is tomorrow night. I will be pitching uh, for this Yay. group tomorrow oh, great. Great. Um, and any other boards and commissions it's mm -hmm. a great it's a great place to find people to get involved mm -hmm. and uh, so 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 much. Much. hope to see you tomorrow I'm not on that board anymore oh you are no so I am now on the arts and public places okay. and council member Rodriguez is okay there well so we'll still and, yeah, and I don't know. So we have a Longmont Housing Authority commissioners meeting tomorrow at five from five thirty till we're done, and then so I don't even know if Council Member Rodriguez will be at the NGLA because they double quadruple booked us. But thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to reach out to my contacts to networks and really push people applying. Um, how many vacancies? So we have, have uh, three vacancies, uh -huh. and then Bob's term is, is a term coming to an end. Uh -huh. So, 
I'm going to reapply. Good. Okay. okay. So then two. <laughs> okay. So is anyone term limited? Is, is up this year. Okay. Um, so we have anybody who's term limited. Yeah. yeah, we have three in Okay. But what do we want to do that April meeting? Well, is there any pressing business we should know about that you're not telling us about? <laughs> um, I know there was interest from the board in uh, more presentation about budget, um, which will be coming up in full swing in uh, April and May. Um, I can certainly present at the May meeting um, uh, on the budget and kind of what our, what our plans are and what our requests are and kind of how the museum budget works because it is complicated. Um, well, it sounds like the email Yes, we have good. a motion to skip our April meeting and to meet in May. Is there a second? Yes, I second. And then what is everyone's vote? Vote to skip April unanimous. Yeah. So we will meet again in May and then we will have a budget. And yes, I'll plan to do a uh, presentation on this. Okay. Um, are there any other board comments? Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion, do we have a second? Do we have a second? All in favor? Unanimous. We are adjourned at 524.